for coming. Um, you know, I'm Beth from Pace. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, so we were, our plan here today was to talk to the group about their, their platforms and um, talk about ways that they can work with the developer or the provider mm -hmm. to really um, make things better. Hard to listen to radio, but unfortunately, <laughs> Um, so I don't know, should we just get started? Or we, yeah. But we could really talk very informally because it's just, it's just us, mm. so feel free to jump in. But if it's okay, I'm still recording it. Yes, okay, that's um, fine. So, so that we, we have the, the presentation and kind of can go back to it and see it. But yeah, we can. That's why we also jumped down from the podium <laughs> <laughs> because it just did not make any sense mm -hmm. to be up there. Mm. And in ways of introduction, I mean, um, we. I don't think I have to introduce Beth anymore because both of you already know her. And then, of course, we also know each other. So I think we'll just jump right in. Why we actually wanted to have the session today? Um, because feedback really is important when we work with an e-portfolio. I mean, we always ask students to, to reflect and to give feedback. But then what, in, what we really want to look at in this session actually is gathering feedback from the user community on campus or in an organization, and then also using that feedback to improve practices on campus and also the e-portfolio implementation, make that better, um, give it a better user experience, but at the same time also feed that information and those insights back to the development teams, no matter which software is being used, so that we can actually, as um, developers look into improving the software so that there aren't so many customizations or that you don't have to have so many workarounds anymore, um, but can really also give a better experience. And so today we are just going to give some ideas for that. Yeah, this in our presentation today we wanted to talk about um, how users, not only those that work to advance e-portfolios, like an e-portfolio director like myself, um, or, or you both, but how you can really engage your full community in this process. And I feel like this is very important. And uh, I was talking with Christina earlier that um, this really started to gel in my mind even more after yesterday's session um, with Helen and Kate and Ashley, the Back to the Future session. Um, you know, during the time when they asked uh, beginners to go to one side of the room mm -hmm. and the middle people in the middle and the experts at the one end. And I started to think about why I come to ABLE. I've been here at every ABLE conference. Uh, to date, um, and you know, why do I keep coming to this? You know, it's to learn more about ePortfolio and to share what I'm doing with ePortfolio. But it's really because I want to be a part of the future changes with ePortfolio. I mean, that's really the key. And so that really, to me, um, is what our talk is about today. It's, it's being part of that future and getting everyone in our community involved and um, making sure we're not passively accepting the tools or platforms as they come to us, but really engaging with the, um, the developers, in, in our case, the open source community, in other people's cases, the, um, the paid solutions, whatever they may be, so that we're all trying to dri drive to the future as opposed to just wait and see what happens. Uh, so the big thing for us in our adoption of ePortfolios um, has been asking questions. Um, and when we made this switch to Mahara five years ago, um, it, that became even more critical for us because working with an open source tool, it was very different, a different setup for us than we were used to. Um, but through Christina's help, it became more clear how to do that. But in a, in a more general sense, I think people need to find out what those channels are early on and find out are there blogs, are there forums, are there discussion groups, are there user groups? In our case, there wasn't, so, so we created one. And that has made all the difference. Um, again, I think users of, of any software or platform or tool need to be very active in the future development of that tool. And we're gonna share some ideas and how you, some specific ideas in how you can all do that. And while asking questions, it's very important to reveal potential issues um, that you might encounter with the, the tool that you're using or how you're using the tool. I find it is also very important to answer questions. So if you are involved in a wider community of the, the users who use the software or even just on campus where you have a support group set up, then um, if you're not just asking questions but also answer questions from colleagues, 
um, instead of just having the um, assuming that the support team will answer those questions. It's very powerful in my opinion because um, a lot of times you just find out really important ways or, and different ways of using the software. Um, the support team knows how to use the software so you kind of get the straight up answer um, how it's supposed to be used. But oftentimes users come up with those incredibly creative ways of using something and by answering questions you can discover those and make them even part of the support and um, implementation. So one way of doing this um, as being part of the community is to re report bugs um, and even things that might not be bugs but problems that users are encountering uh, with usability. Um, our CIO talks frequently about UX, the UX experience and improving that in all ways, classrooms, um, the technologies we use, that we always have to think about it from the user perspective. And so as we dig in deeper with ePortfolios, it, it's almost like we forget that piece because we're so comfortable with the platform. I've become one with Mahara. <laughs> um, it makes total sense to me. So uh, to take a step back and ask the users, when you log into Mahara, do you know where to go? Do you know how to upload a file? Do you know how to share your ePortfolio? And what we found a couple, uh, two years ago was that the answer to some of those questions was no. Even when we were doing workshops, documentation, help guides, bookmarks. Um, and so together through the Mahara user group, um, we, we tried to um, figure out some solutions and we've actually customized um, our instance of Mahara with a big green button, create and share. But we are also hoping, hope, hoping and I think we are doing this, influencing the direction of Mahara and as Christina gave us a sneak peek the other week of the newest version uh, coming out I do think that um, it, things are heading in the right way and um, we certainly encourage <laughs> you all to do the same <laughs> uh, to continue to make your voices heard and, and really listen to your users and the problems they're encountering not only with bugs but also really with usability. Mm -hmm. Because we, we do need to communicate what is problematic and let us as development teams know how to solve things, how to make changes and that's why we also usually try to showcase the installations of others like University of the Arts London or pulling in uh, Roger from Solent University or showcasing what Pace is doing on others so that uh, when there are customizations being made in the community that others can see them, can think about them and then let us know through additional feedback channels, well this would be really nice to have in Mahara or any other software if you're working with something else and so that really helps us to understand what users actually need and so it is one way of feeding back especially in regards to the usability. Right. And, um, be before jumping into surveys, just another example of this is um, I wanted to mention um, I had participated in the Connect to Learning project that was a three-year grant involving 24 institutions and we used education as the platform uh, for that work. And many of the schools in the project are education campuses, but together when we were using the tool for our own work and research, you know, we ran into problems there and things we couldn't do or, or again, usability issues. And together as a group, uh, through Brad Ian from LaGuardia Community College, we lobbied education to, to make some changes. So clearly this is a path that needs to be followed no matter what your ePortfolio solution is. Uh, and we wanted to share some survey ideas with you about ways you can really get at some of these issues with your community. So um, key stakeholders, um, including uh, students and faculty, um, we encourage you to seek both quantitative and qualitative feedback wherever possible. Um, we've done this in a variety of ways, focus groups, actual surveys through Qualtrics, um, and uh, our e-turns have been a key piece of this. We've really tried to leverage our students that are working closely with the, the students using ePortfolios and the faculty using ePortfolios to get at these types of questions, understanding how they're being used, what the challenges are, um, how integrated ePortfolio is into their classes, um, that's been key and really drilling down even at the feature level to understand uh, what's being used and what's not. Um, and this is, this is something that's ongoing. I mean, we're never really done with this kind of work. Um, I think uh, our ePortfolio use continues to evolve. I think a lot of our users are just using the tip of the iceberg, not using all of the robust features uh, in Mahara in our case. 
And so by doing these kind of surveys, we can um, learn more about usage, more than just the raw numbers reports. Of course, we do those too. But this gives us a different t piece of information and one that we hope to continue communicating more through the forums and channels, our Facebook group, Mahara Wiki, to again keep influencing the direction that Mahara is heading. Mm -hmm. And following nicely from services, then uh, user interviews, because while the service give you kind of a survey uh, across a larger number of pe uh, number of people, you might want to drill more deeply and really find out the nitty gritty of what a problem actually is. And that's where user interviews can come in very handily, uh, because um, especially using a guided interview can then help to get. Further, th uh, further information from users, but also again have some um, an an overview and also a framework for comparing those answers and putting them then back together in, in a more qualitative way, and so that really helps to inform the insight of individuals where you want to follow up a bit more. So those surveys and user interviews are definitely more of the traditional ways of ga uh, gathering feedback and receiving it. And Beth already mentioned a few others like um, focus groups and so idea storming is one idea for that. Um, because it really helps to um, collaborate on ideas and define workflows. Um, because idea storming is kind of you, you work together on an idea or on a problem or on a solution and um, yesterday Laura was talking about how they have the assessment days done and how uh, at Gutman Community College and how they work with the faculty in um, interdisciplinary teams and have carousels going on and that you storming is very it's a very similar idea so that you're not swimming in your own soup but you're really also getting insight from others outside of your regular um, frame and so what we have done at Mahara events in the past um, now already for the third time is that we ask people questions and that can take various different forms. In this case, that was at the Moodle Mahara meetup in Adelaide, where we had a session just 45 minutes, so it doesn't even have to be very long. Um, what we really want to emphasize today in this presentation is that these ideas that we are showing are some that can be done easily with easy tools, don't require a big laboratory set up or a huge research group, but it's something that every campus can do even in a couple of hours or an afternoon with some faculty, with some students. And so in this case, we just had 45 minutes available, so we gave a brief introduction to the um, feature that we wanted people to look at, then they went into small groups of three and discussed it. So first they looked into the question, then they found a solution, thought which way would work better for them, and in the end we gathered all that together. And now we as development team have a better idea of how we should actually implement that feature. Because before we, we do know, kind of we have our own ideas and know what some community members have said, but actually working with the users I find very powerful because that even gives us more insight. So, um, most of our talk at this point has been focusing on um, the technical aspects of improving your ePortfolio platform, but really, you know, we know that this has to have a pedagogical focus, and um, part of my challenge has been trying to um, determine how ePortfolios is situated in what it, you know we think of as our learning ecosystem, right? You've heard other people use that <laughs> term this conference. And so um, it's more than just um, which button to press, but really how to use ePortfolios and how to integrate them so that they're not just bolted on an afterthought at the end of the course, put your project in your e-portfolio and move on. Uh, and so I think this too needs to be part of the open dialogue with um, the developers of e-portfolios so that we can continue to make e-portfolios, um, again, <laughs> more, um, more in context with what um, the learning goals of the institution are. I don't know if anyone has thoughts on that. Yeah, what's what's occurring to me is just that, that there are different there are different groups of vendors. I mean, <coughs> an open source vendor's product is simply targeted to more of a specific use. But what if we find uh, there are other vendors who have a product that they want to have be everything? Right. And I think that's often a really bad thing. But um, how do you feel about that? I don't know how do you, you know their business plans are not necessarily aligned with what the user needs. And I, 
think the only way to force that is to is, is to have a larger group of, of their of users. But if their users' needs are not just about, for example, in this case, not just about a Werner-centered platform, mm -hmm. but maybe one that's core-centric also, mm -hmm. then, then there may be some conflict in, in the way that we can interact with them to promote our agenda. Yes. <coughs> yes. Yeah, I think it is. It's it's becoming a complicated landscape with <laughs> yeah. the ed tech tools, right? Where exactly. we go to adopt a new tool, and it seems to have overlap with seven other tools we already have. <laughs> and so, trying to um, make it clear to the com your community what tool is for what purpose, yeah. I think it's further complicated by ePortfolios that we know can be used in so many different yeah. ways. At the, at the course level, at the programmatic level, mm -hmm. is it teaching learning? Is it a showcase? Is it an assessment tool? Is it all of the above? And so that just further complicates the issue. Um, but again, the more we can be voices in the community helping to drive the, the future of our ePortfolio solution, I think the better off we'll be. So as we mentioned, one way that we've tried to do this within, within Mahara is to create a user group, and clearly that's caught on. Um, and these meetings are very inclusive. Um, we have tech people, we have non-tech people, we have students participate, we've done student showcases, and together we've uncovered some commonalities which has been so interesting and helpful. And um, it's more than just the sharing of issues, you know, together we've worked towards some solutions. And luckily, um, Christina and Catalyst have been part of these conversations, and so we're not having these user group meetings in isolation, but really coming together um, to pool our concerns, our thoughts and ideas, and helping to plan a vision for the future. And so kind of the sharing and learning from each other is very important. And some of the user groups meet actually just face to face. Others like the Mahara user group here in New York, uh, not here in New York, but kind of here in the United States, um, meets face to face, but then also online, making it possible for a wider community uh, to get together. And that is really powerful. And also having the student showcase every year has been very wonderful to also pull in those voices that we often don't really hear directly because they are using the tools but not that they are not really communi um, participating so much in the community. Right and as Katie Lewis mentioned in her Ignite session the other day we all learn from our student users right mm -hmm. because they use e-portfolios in ways we can't even imagine I think she she said something about that and, and, and I, we see that too. And so another way of uh, actively getting engaged, especially at an event like this or another conference or even at a user group meeting, is to have a hackfest. Traditionally, that is for programmers, but actually at uh, Mahara Hui last year, we tried to also involve users to solve problems and develop new features. And so we, the first two days we had presentations, and the third day was a hackfest where we also invited regular users because we didn't just want to make it about the developers. And so Shane Nussler here from Can uh, University of Canberra, for example, talked about um, his vision of, of smart evidence, which is bringing evidence maps into um, into um, Mahara. And so we um, had a session at the Hackfest where we really looked at usability and also conceptualizing the idea um, because that's the first stage of actually getting a feature developed because the programmers are the executors but they are not necessarily involved in the planning stages and so here was a diverse group of people writing user stories thinking the, through the idea a bit more looking at workflows and such and really shaping the idea further and also giving validation to the team from the uh, University of Canberra in order to say yes this is really a good idea that also others in the community want to pursue and of course for us that was also validation yes we should also be looking into that and encouraging users to participate in the development of this feature and so to sum up um, there are we, we hope to have shown you a number of ideas of how you can involve your campus community and also get involved in the wider community of the software that you're involved in. And of course, some, some of those ideas also apply to just um, use of ePortfolio. So it's not very, not just limited to the software. Um, and the ideas oftentimes are not really 
uh, programmer centric, but really involve the users because what we need to look at is the usability, is workflows, and is also the, the user experience on large so that we can also conceptualize ideas and bring those to the table to improve things and then take those ideas to the development teams in order to execute them and make them available. And so um, I got a lot of ideas actually from this book, which is called Game Storming, um, where you have short, medium, and longer activities that are oftentimes very easy to execute and really give you just some hints on how to make engaging sessions where people get up and walk around and work together instead of just having uh, the regular ideas that we have. And I mean, here at the conference, we have seen a number of ideas already floating around, in particular the carousel, which has been tried and tested and is working well in a lot of cases. But there are so many other ideas of what to do and also, especially in modern spaces where you can write on the walls or even on tables and all that. So just getting some of those ideas in and really using the technology that is available in such rooms to also help with those sessions um, can be very good. And so we would like to invite you now. Yes, I, I know we're just about out of time, but we wanted to end and kind of leave this question out. What are your ideas about engaging in your, uh, engaging your, both your stakeholders in your community and also engaging in the, the larger community with your e-portfolio solution? Uh, well, I have been part of a user group as well, the Muggsy user group yeah. from Ahara in the UK. Um, and I just think I'm kind of working on, um, with this, I'm hoping I'll be able to present um, at the Mahara Hui UK yeah. in November. Um, it's sort of like a, a funding framework, because Obviously, that there is certain elements of open source software, whether it's Moodle or Mahara, that aren't necessarily always ideal and can be frustrated about. Um, but one of the brilliant things about open source software is it's open source, so you can kind of more easily change it. Whereas sometimes with proprietary software, you you can lobby and say, "Oh, we'll make this change." But we know from people we pay to do stuff, sometimes they're actually worse systems than the ones that you can get for free. Um, but yeah, sometimes sort of higher up in the university, um, people can be all very willing to go, oh, well, we'll just buy, buy in a different system. You know, there's a lot of sort of talk about um, looking at um, Canvas over Moodle mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like, well, no, you could make Moodle exactly like Canvas if you threw probably less <laughs> money at it. Um, yeah. and, but so um, with Mahara in particular, you know, if there are kind of, if you're with the user group, you can kind of get ideas. Um, and if people do have things that sort of we can unanimously agree on, like this would be a great new feature, yet we need to do this, maybe it's groups. We need to have this new feature in groups. Well, if everybody just had like a little pot of money, you know, maybe you can only get $100 or something out of your university, but if, you know, $1,000, but if five universities can do that, well, suddenly you've got a bit more money. So if we had like a framework, almost kind of like a Kickstarter, Kickstarter. but perhaps <laughs> like more collaborative yeah. than just using Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, but you know, people could pull money in and you really utilize that community, not just for solving each other's problems, right. but also for bringing money together and actually making the change that we want rather than just going, oh, this is it, great, and right. then never doing anything about right. it. Interesting. Yeah, so that, that's something I'm looking for. Do, do, do you folks, does Skados respond to, if you have a number of different groups who want the same sort of feature set, or do, would you, you know that this particular institution has a lot of money, so you'll actually contract with them to do this fix and then provide it to the, to, to the core? Uh, both, actually. Uh -huh. So it really depends on when feature requests are coming in and when somebody wants us to do something. So for example, with the Mahara Assignment Submission plugin, um, two institutions were interested in it. Um, and so we contacted them both and gave them the same proposal to make mm. it very oh, trans so transparent. Split the cost. And the then two. they decided what they wanted to do, which oh. part they wanted to cover. 
and so that's how this part got split up and then of course the the altogether feature was was then made available um, for smart evidence uh, what we are doing is kind of in a way the uh, what Domi suggested with the crowdfunding we we are actively presenting on it and then also bring make get, um, bring the word out so that others can say yes I'd like to contribute um, and what we found though a lot of times that is quite difficult because everybody's on a different funding year has different sort of budgets available and with a very large um, piece of work it oftentimes does work better if somebody has a big pot of money especially if um, it crosses years or so but um, what uh, definitely would work if we gather a lot of people together who can then contribute whatever they can in order to develop a bigger feature as well. And it's just challenging to coordinate all that. And so yeah. we also yeah. actively invite, of course, the organizations themselves to take a little bit more care of that so that it's not just coming from us as, as the vendor or as the development team, but really as also championed by the other organizations who actually want the feature. So it's definitely always possible and we, we certainly encourage co-funding. We already have very good experience with that um, in COHA, which is an integrated library management system where libraries in New Zealand do that um, on a not frequent basis, but from time to time and it's working really well because they are also small, don't have lots of money and when they want something implemented everybody chips in and then it gets done and also in integrated into the core product so that it's available to everybody then and sometimes after that others come in and want something else added onto it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>